à sauver la France et à nous rendre libres. Et je crois que ce matin, ce que nous avons vécu ensemble pour célébrer le, le D-Day, célébrer le rôle de ces vétérans américains, était un moment important. Cette promesse de Normandie, comme nous l'avons évoqué ce matin, c'est aussi ce que nos deux pays ensemble continuent de faire sur le plan international pour préserver la démocratie, la liberté, et nous allons avoir l'occasion d'en parler. C'est l'action qui est la nôtre, ensemble, en Afrique, au Levant, sur des sujets de crise internationaux, parce que les valeurs que nous portons nous dépassent. C'est pour cela que je suis toujours très heureux que le président Trump soit en France et que nous puissions ensemble travailler l'un avec l'autre. I will say a few words in English and I will repeat them. exactly what I what I say. I wanted first to thank you, dear Donald President Trump, for your presence here in this place and thanks to your country, your nation, and your veterans. This morning, we paid this tribute to the courage, and I think it was a great moment to celebrate and celebrate these people. And, and I think your presence here to celebrate them and their presence is for me the best evidence of this unbreakable links between our two nations. From the very beginning of the American nation and all over the different centenaries. I think this message they convey to us and our main tribute is precisely to protect freedom and democracy everywhere and this is why I'm always extremely happy to discuss with you in Washington, in Paris or everywhere where I can come today because we work very closely together, our soldiers will work very closely together in Sahel, in uh, Iraq, in Syria. Each time freedom and democracy is at stake we work closely together and we will follow up. So thanks for this friendship. Thank thanks for what your country did for my country. And thanks for what we will do together for both of us and the rest of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And I will say we've had great success working together too. Um, whether it's the caliphate, whether it was a couple of other things we did militarily, and you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, your military is excellent. My people report back, they say it's absolutely excellent, but they work very well together. This was a very special day, and I want to thank you for inviting me. This is something that was, uh, we read about it all our lives, Normandy. And there was, uh, there were those that say it was the most important ever not just at that time, but ever. And to be a part of it and to uh, have number 75, 75 years was very, very special. So uh, we went very much appreciate it. We met some great people today, some tremendous people, some very brave people. And uh, I look forward to uh, coming back. We'll be coming back. Hopefully over the years, we'll be coming back. But it's a very special place. It's an, it's an amazing place. and. It's somewhere when you think of those places of great importance, this is certainly one of the top. In the eyes of some, it's the top because of what it meant in terms of the turnaround of a very, very bad situation. That was the big turn. So uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, seeing it firsthand was something. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be now discussing, uh, first of all, this beautiful place where we ended up. I hope everybody can appreciate. Uh, I'd love you to maybe tell some of the folks in the media just a quick, like you did me, uh, how it started with Napoleon. It's a very interesting place that we're in. And as you know, France has many interesting places. But we'll be discussing, uh, to me, just as interesting as trade and military and all sorts of things. So we're going to spend a little time together. And then I'll be going back uh, probably tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. We've pretty much finished up. We've had a very hectic schedule. Most of you have been with us from the beginning, but it's been a, a beautiful schedule. Got to know the Queen. The Queen is a great woman, as you know. And uh, we had a very, very good talk with the United Kingdom and a lot of good talks on trade. And you know what's going on over there. It's 
a complex subject because of Brexit. Nobody knows where it ends up, but I know it's going to end up very well. And uh, then we came here, and a lot of people are anxious to see what we're going to be doing together, because, as you know, we know what a lot of other people don't know. We're doing a lot together. And the relationship between you and I, and also France and the United States, has been outstanding. I don't think it's ever been maybe as good. It's been good sometimes, and sometimes it hasn't been, but right now it's outstanding. So the relationship that we've had together has been really terrific, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. President, when you were talking about the cemetery, you looked animated at one point, then you turned away from us. I just, you know, yeah, we were talking about the depth and the, the number of people killed. You know, we had a, uh, they called them the guides, and uh, they were guiding us. They were telling us what happened and when. And they talked about the first wave came in, and 92% of the people in the first wave were killed. And then the second wave came in, and it was 80% were killed. And then third wave, and fourth wave, and then I guess they said the sixth wave, they broke through. It's like a dam. They broke through, and it was so incredible and so fascinating. And then you talk about bravery. But when you think 92% of the people were killed in the first wave, so it kept going down, 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 and then they break through. And it's a lot of courage and a lot of heartbreak, but an incredible victory. It's one of the most important victories, you know what So you might want to respond. No, but I, I mean, you're perfectly right. We had a lot of discussions, and indeed, and, and all these events were described. And I think what is a very important thing, especially for a young generation, having shared this word with these actual heroes, these veterans, is that a lot of things probably we take for granted, we are precisely in quest or protected by these guys. And a lot of these veterans, and you, I mean, I think you told it during your speech, came back for the very first time after the war. And they came here, they took a lot of risk. They put their life at risk for our country and for, for liberty. And I think for a young generation, in the US and in France, it's extremely important to see these veterans are, as actual heroes are those precisely thanks to all these maneuvers and these actions allowed our country to be free. In 2004, George W. Bush said here in Normandy, we would do it again for our friends. Would you say that too? Yeah. And Monsieur Macron, Monsieur le Président Macron, uh, qu'est-ce que vous dites au Président Trump pour uh, préserver uh, l'alliance entre alliés qui est un peu malmenée en ce moment? I would certainly recommend that, definitely. Look, this was a great unifying situation. There's probably been seldom in history has there been anything like it. But especially when you heard about the waves of people coming in, knowing they were going to be killed, most of them. It's uh, just an incredible thing. And then uh, the result was, as many people died, the result was so important because it, it's we have what we have today because of Things like that. And it's very sad, but I would absolutely be right there. I would be right there. We have a very good partnership. We really have a partnership, I guess. Maybe it's the best word. They talk about allies, and they talk about many different words you can use, but we have a great partnership, France and the U.S. Additional tariffs in China? Well, you mean, when am I going to put the extra $325 billion worth of tariffs? Uh, I will make that decision, I would say, over the next two weeks, probably right after the G20. One way or the other, I'll make that decision after the G20. I'll be meeting with President Xi, and uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, probably planning it sometime after G20. Okay? Thank you. Par rapport à votre question, nous avons aujourd'hui, Président, l'a dit, une relation extrêmement forte et nous sommes, qu'il s'agisse des opérations que nous menons en Afrique ou, ou au Levant, extrêmement liés. Et nos soldats, ce qui est, je dirais, le, le risque principal que nous prenons ensemble, travaillent main dans la main sur tous ces théâtres d'opérations. Nous allons aujourd'hui évoquer beaucoup de sujets de, de tensions internationales, évidemment l'Iran, le Moyen-Orient et, et d'autres sujets. Et à chaque fois, je crois qu'il est important que nous puissions avoir une vue commune. 
Ce que ces moments nous rappellent, c'est que nous avons su vaincre le joug nazi, précisément parce que toutes les armées alliées se sont mises ensemble et parce que nous avons été fidèles à ce qui est, je crois, très profondément au cœur de l'identité américaine et française, le goût pour la démocratie et la liberté. Ce que j'ai voulu rappeler aussi tout à l'heure, c'est qu'on ne peut pas séparer l'amour de la patrie et le goût de la liberté, en particulier quand on est américain et quand on est français. Et nous savons ça très profondément, c'est dans nos gènes. Et donc à chaque fois que la liberté ou la démocratie sont menacées, nous agissons ensemble. Et donc nous allons le poursuivre. Le travail va continuer de se faire et à chaque fois que nous évoquons cela, nous avançons. Donc euh, en l'heure qui vient, nous allons sur euh, chacun des sujets du moment bâtir des positions communes pour pouvoir euh, avancer. Mais je suis pour ma part extrêmement confiant et surtout je tiens beaucoup à cette relation euh, historique qui nous dépasse et cette amitié qu'il y a entre les États-Unis et la France, le président Trump et moi-même. You support Brexit, is it the good way you support Brexit? Is it the good way to ensure Europe is at, is at peace and strong? Well, that's really going to be between the UK and the European Union and they're working very hard. I know they're working very hard together. It doesn't seem to be working out, but at some point something will happen one way or the other. It'll all work out, but uh, I'm interested to find out how it, how it happens also. Uh, very big will be who's going to be your new prime minister over in the UK. That's going to be a very big thing. That's happening now. So I think before you can think in terms of Brexit for the next few weeks, you're going to have to find out what happens, who's going to be the new leader. And uh, that's a very interesting situation taking place. I found it to be a very uh, sort of an amazing period of time, especially having spent so much time with the Queen, who I think is an incredible lady. But I spent so much time and, uh, you know, there's a lot of question marks as to who's going to be leading. And uh, so it was very interesting talking to her, being with her for so many hours, actually, for so many, I feel I know her so well, and she certainly knows me very well right now. But we have a very good relationship also with the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. But it'll all work out. Mr. President, you see leaders have had differences over the line in the past. Do those differences remain, and what are you talking about today? Well, I don't think we have differences over Iran. I don't think that the President wants to see nuclear weapons, and neither do I, and that's what it's all about. He doesn't want to see them having nuclear weapons, and I don't want to see them having no nuclear weapons, and they won't have nuclear weapons. Uh, with that being said, you know, let's see what happens with Iran. But when I became president, uh, hard to believe, two and a half years ago, now more, uh, Iran was uh, a true state of terror. They still are, but they were undisputed champions of terror. And that's a bad thing. And we had 14 different locations where they were fighting, causing between Yemen and Syria, but many other locations and many other battle sites. And it was all about Iran. They were behind every one of them. They're not doing that anymore. They're doing very poorly as a nation. Uh, they're failing as a nation. And I don't want them to fail as a nation. They can, we can turn that around very quickly. But the sanctions have been extraordinary, how, how powerful they've been. And other things. I understand they want to talk. And if they want to talk, that's fine. We'll, we'll talk. But the one thing that they can't have is they can't have nuclear weapons. And I think the President of France would agree with that very strongly. I think that he would agree that they cannot have nuclear weapons. I, I, I think we do share the same objective on Iran. What do we want to do? First, we want to be sure they don't get nuclear, nuclear weapons. I mean, we had an instrument in 2025. We want to go further and have full certainty on the long run. Second, we want to reduce our ballistic activity. And third, we want to contain the regional action. I mean, these three approaches, these three objectives are important. We have, as well, a fourth common objective, peace in the region. So we have to deliver together these four objectives. This is, this, is, this is the point. This is the point. And all the other debates are about technicalities. In order to build that, you need to start a negotiation, and I think The words pronounced by President Trump is that they are very important. We need to open a new negotiation in order to build and to get these four objectives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.